Welcome to Play by Play Podcast, your passport to untold stories of the beautiful game. My name is Patrick Bergman. And my name is Ahmed Ehrim. This is where we're going to tell you about all the untold stories of the beautiful game inside the football and outside the football plays abroad and within the UK, within the game and outside the game, including business. Bro, the topic today, the topic is crazy. All right. Hi guys, welcome to Play by Play podcast. Okay, my name is Ahmed, and we have Patrick Bergman. So, topic of today's discussion is um the priority needed in order to become a professional footballer, prioritizing the right things in life. Patrick, do you want to kick it off? Yes. Okay, so I was recently speaking to my mother. And she said to me, oh, I, I would like to be fit, but I love ice cream so much. I said to her, you love ice cream, but you like to be fit. You would like to be fit. Okay. And that's the problem. If she would have diagnosed cancer or something, she would prioritize not eating ice cream over being healthy. So it's all about the priorities in the life. If you like something, you will not prioritize this as much as you as as much as the thing that you love. Mm -hmm. And it goes same with, with the pleasure. Like people choose the pleasure over their goals because they just simply love the pleasure more than the goal. Mm. And like you should you should spot in life the things that you say to yourself that you love and the things that you say that you like maybe you don't love to play football you just like to play football but you love to play video games Mm. so obviously you will not give your best on football trainings on football games because you like it but you will give your 100% on on playing FIFA because you love it there's a saying bro like people won't change Unless um, two things, right? Either trauma, like you said, trauma happens, whether they got cancer or whatever, and they're like, yo, now I need to change. Do you know what I mean? Or they change because the pain of stagnation over succeeds the pain of fear of change. 100%. Because at the end of the day, you're like, mm, I'll do it tomorrow. Mm, I'll do it tomorrow. And then it gets to a stage where you're sick and tired of you staying in the same position for the last three years. And you think, why is everyone elevated and I'm still in the same spot? Do you know what I mean? And that's how people become depressed. That's how people become miserable. Because there's no form of progression in their life. And this is why we were saying for the last few previous podcasts, it's better to it's better to be on an unfamiliar heaven than a familiar hell. One hundred percent. But again, it's de- it's you have to detach your current self identity that you're comfortable with to change your your current self identity to something that is new to the unknown. People don't like the unknown. Because they're like, ah, it's so negative. They're like, ah, I don't know what's to come. Ah, ah, what if this, ah, that. And then they become like, anxiety, they have anxious attachment, or whatever. Instead of being like that, just be like, oh, what could it lead to? What could it, look at, ooh, look at the amazing path that it could lead to. And if it doesn't work, maybe I'll take a different path and stuff like that. The more you try, even if you fail, the more you know what doesn't work and what you don't like. And and the one step closer you are to getting to where you need to be. And that's all life is. I said this before. You need to study yourself. You need to look at your past decisions because your past decisions will actually reveal what you like, what you love. This is all the, like the person you are today this is not that you woke up today and hey, I'm a new person. No, you're you're 
the person you are today is the consequence of your actions the last few years. 100%. So like we spoke, uh, we spoke with Thomas about journaling, how powerful it is to journal. And I also have one routine where I write problem in the middle of the of the paper and I just write the solutions. So like uh, every solution is the is is the answer to the problem that you have been having the last weeks, months, but you haven't had the time to actually look back and realize that there was a problem in the first place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have I have an unpopular opinion. <clears throat> a lot of people know already know the solution subconsciously to their problems. Two things. You want validation? Oh, I want reassurance. Oh, I tell me I'm doing the right thing. Oh, yeah. Am I doing this? Uh, and then they want people to be like, oh, yeah, you're doing the right thing. Uh, and they be like, I'm doing the right thing. Do you know what I mean? Or the fear of seeking knowledge and help. If you feel that certain things is out of your depth, hire a mentor, get a coach. Get a, get a dietitian, get a nutritionist, whatever it needs to be. If you feel like that field of knowledge is out of your um your knowledge and what you know what to do, then like a businessman, they hire people to make their business even more successful. It's the same thing. Treat yourself like one big project, and you'll get there. And hire the right people to kind of facilitate your journey. We spoke about our mutual friend that uh, would love to carry a Gucci bag in front of the camera, but he would like to be a football player. And like, really, it's it's like, it's just as simple as you as you listen to people. Like, you can immediately spot what they like, what they love. Like, yeah, 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 I would like to be a football player. Next day, eating McDonald's because he loves he loves it more than than being fit and being mm. able to compete on the highest level. Mm. And I think I think you should you should see it you should see it you should touch it to realize what you love and what you like. Like many times, mm. people want to like something without even looking at it from a different perspective and to find out if they actually love it. One thing I would say is like, you need to understand, if you want to be a footballer, I question this to every one of my clients that I coach, whether they're playing Liverpool, Liverpool under 15s, whether they're playing Liverpool under 16s or whatever, but like all the kids that I've been coaching, right? And so, you ask them, why do you want to be a footballer? I want to play in the Premier League. I want, I want, I want to have a big house. I want to buy that. And I answer them, you're never going to make it. If that's your purpose and your why, you're never going to make it. Bro. And they're like, what, what do you mean? What, what do you mean? I play for Liverpool. I want to make it. Oh, what do you mean? What do you... I'm like, look at you. You're getting overprotected of your dream because you're too busy having a purpose that serves nothing but yourself. Your purpose has to be way bigger and way beyond yourself. Biggest example, look at look at um, all the top, top footballers. Messi. Bro, man had a growth hormone issue, bro. I know Argentina club were going to pay for him, bro. Do you know what I mean? And he knew he needed the medications. He knew he needed to get his family out of the gutter, out of the hood. Ronaldo was the same, bro. Man was living in a little island, bro. And his mum was a cleaner. He said, I'm going to make sure my mum doesn't work again. Your purpose, even like the Brazilian, the Brazilian players, they're like, oh, I need to get my family out of the favelas. I need to do... Their purpose exceeds their self-pleasure. The self need this. Oh, I want this. I want to need to do this. I want to do this because I want to carry the wash bag, the Gucci wash bag. 
with AirPods go like this. So I mean, like, it has to be well beyond this. Uh, I wanna, I wanna have a, a, a sexy blonde wife. Da, da, da. So I mean, vamos a la playa. I wanna be in Spain. I wanna. It's all me, 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 me. But all you're doing subconsciously, you're doing it for the sake of seeking pleasure. This is what I mean. Like, if your purpose is for seeking pleasure and you're wanting to make it for, for seeking pleasure, you're never going to make it because football is so much lows and little highs. That's all it is. That's the reality of it. And that's what I'm trying to teach these uh, young upcoming kids. But a lot of them can't find that inner purpose, that inner drive, because when they get injured, when the manager, when the new manager comes in and they got played and they don't play for like 18 months and they only play like three games, blah, blah. Are you st- is your mind still going to fixate on, oh, I still think about that YouTube bag in them dark, dark days? No way in hell. You're going to be like, oh, oh I'm never going to get that Gucci bag. That's not good enough. I never. Whereas if you're going to be like, no, nah, I'm sick and tired of not seeing my mum. And she's working 18 hours a day as a cleaner and she's hurting her back and she's uh, like, she's overworking and she's working like 90 hours a week, blah, blah, blah. And do you know what I mean? Your purpose is well beyond yourself. That's your, what I would say is that purpose over pleasure in terms of like your mindset and your goals in terms of like why you want to make a pro. And the big part of that is that many players has their dream has weak foundations. Like you see, you see them kids at the age of 18 playing football every day, enjoying and living their life. And suddenly they get the girlfriend and they love their girl- girlfriend more than becoming a football player. Suddenly they, they get injured. And they realize that actually this is not what I want to do. I have been mm-hmm. doing this for, for the last 15 year, 10, 15 years, but actually this is not what I want to do. Mm-hmm. I, I rather to play video games. Mm-hmm. That's what I love. I, I, I like to play football. Yeah, cool. But I love to play video games and liking me a lot wake you <laughs> up in the morning. Yeah, but... Uh... <laughs> Let me tell you a quick funny story. <laughs> you won't believe this, right? This kid, yeah. Um, this kid, this kid was a weird one, right? I remember him. I don't know if he's still playing, but he used to play for Liverpool. And then um, it was lockdown, bro. So the kid got released, yeah, because obviously they didn't give him a contract, and the kid was struggling to find a club because it was lockdown. And he's been with his missus, uh, his girlfriend, for like, what was it? Uh, since he was a kid. Guess what happened, though? He got released, yeah? This guy starts making OnlyFans videos. And he got released, <laughs> bro. Only because he stopped making money and his girlfriend wanted to make money. And she got him involved. And the guy is stupid, bro, yeah? This guy went, uh, this whole thing went viral on Twitter, right? And he's doing all sorts. And I'm sat there thinking, bro, you've just been released from Liverpool under 23s. That's your life gone. Because no club wanna be want you to represent them and you're too busy doing like 18 plus stuff on the fans for your missus. Do you know what I'm saying? And that's no misses. That's for the streets, do you know what I'm saying? But I, I don't I'm that no oh, I'll do anything for this. I'll do anything for her. I'll do this, I'll do that. Oh do that. But another one but a kid on um he got released lift but under eighteens and he got offered in um Segunda A team, so basically second tier in uh, Spain. He went down there and he goes, mm, I'm getting homesick. 
I'm like, bro, like, they want to give you a contract. Just firm it. You might play in the Spanish Cup. You might do well, play against Barcelona. And then that's your career set, bro. And he's like, oh, no, I'm getting homesick. I want to come home. I miss my girlfriend. I've never been outside of home all my life because he's played for Liverpool all his life, you know? So, guess where, he, guess where he's at now? Mm. He got released from a Welsh firm team and he's been injured the last two years, bro. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Like, it doesn't make sense. They're like, oh, pleasure, pleasure, oh, this. And then at 18, because they get, like, little money, which is, like, I think, like, £500 a week, right, or £400 a week, they use £300 just to get a Mercedes a Mercedes A-class or a Mercedes GLA to be like, yeah, I'm the man now to show up. They'll be like, yeah. When I'm like, you, you little stupid guy. I would have invested that money on an FNC coach on a nutritionist to push yourself that extra mile on a psychologist, wherever, to push you that to that first team. No, no, no. And then they get released and they've smashed all the cash. And they're like, oh, I have to give him my car back to the garage. I have to drive a little beat up car or some of them they don't even have a car anymore and they have to take train and buses now it's literally so stupid honestly I would even go further and I would say do you love money or do you love football would you be able to invest in your dream many players wouldn't do that Many players would would say, no, do I need to pay to play football? Oh, no, no, bro. I'd rather to stack the cash to buy the Gucci bag. <laughs> so it's at the end, it's just ask yourself, do you love it? Do you like it? And that's your answer. Well, that's what I mean. Your, your, people say, how bad do you want it? And I say, mm. You can see it, and I know how people badly want it based on their actions and based on their, um, how they react to their actions and the consequences it leads to. Because at the end of the day, if you're like season finished on a play, ten, I mean like eight to 10 games all season, ah, you know what? I'm gonna go to Dubai. I'm gonna spend three, five grand, go to Dubai. I'm gonna, I'm not bro. What do you need the rest for? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And, like, and me personally, I, I don't know about you, Patrick, I don't feel like I deserve rest because I didn't do well enough. That's the type of person I am. Do you know what I mean? Holding yourself accountable. Do you know what I mean? Like, because mm. in order to make it, like Tim Grover said, winning is everything. It's that toxic, obsessiveness that's the only way you're going to improve and then people go oh balance oh balance you need to balance your life bro shut the hell up bro just shut the hell up the first five six years until you make you make it all the way through and you get that your first year contract then the second year contract then you can talk about being balanced but at the minute there's no such thing as a balance it's all in but there is another thing there are players many players that play professionally and they like it they don't love it but they just like it but they love more the money they love more the fame than they that they like to play football and because they love the fame the money they are giving their best on the training sessions they're they are giving their best in connecting with people they are giving their best in in games in uh, in uh, how they present themselves just to get the money just to get the fame so like don't get don't get us wrong that if you like to play football you will not become a football player some players do some players like to play football but they love other stuff more and they still play professionally Mostly because their skill set is so high. Maybe they used to love football when they were kids, and then when they grow up, they they just 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 loved other stuff and just they just liked to play football. 
Mm. I'm sure there are even players that don't like to play football, but they are still still doing it because they love the fame, the money. Biggest example is Mark, Marcus Rashford, bro. Biggest, oh, the yeah. guy. <laughs> Jesse <all>. Lingard. <laughs> Jesse Lingard. Man's gone. Yeah. Every game, bro. <laughs> even in Korea, man's doing this. What's this, bro? I mean, man's just there for vibes, but you've got to understand what type of player are you, right? This doesn't, like, well, I have an unpopular opinion. Not everyone can be that guy, right? Not everyone can be there. Eden Hazard, turn up to training with laces undone and then rip it up, do you know what I mean? Not everyone can be that guy. Everyone thinking, yeah, I'm going to be a footballer. I want to be like Neymar. Watch his YouTube compilation clips and that. Be like, yeah, I'm going to do that in training. But not everyone can be that guy, bro. Some man... 9.5 out of 10 players, you have to accept you're not that guy. You're not that guy, bro. Do you know what I mean? Stick to being like a professional, a good professional player. Be a one landed on and off the pitch, sleep, whoop, everything, nutrition. Be that guy, do you know what I mean? And then you're increasing the likelihood of making it. If you're not that guy that has a 10 out of 10 skill set in one area, Stop trying to copy their behaviors, their um body language. Because if you're not that guy, bro, I promise you, no manager is gonna have a look at you, bro. So be a professional first. A lot of people are like, oh, but no is doing it. Oh, but Ronaldinho is doing it. Oh, but I'm not. Like, you're not that guy, bro. I beg. Your feet, you've got two left feet. Do you know what I mean? You're not that guy. Work on it. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> but as well, it's some people are just too delusional and don't have that awareness. I read the Kobe Bryant book, and uh, there was one situation that he explained on the pitch. He said that many players hide from physical battles on the on the on the court. And uh, he gave an example that it was one game where a player was just giving him the elbow, stepping on his feet, talking trash to him. And Kobe Bryant was just, keep on going, I love it. I love it, keep on going. And this is how this is how you need to be, bro. Like, you, mm. if you love playing football, you need to love everything about it. Everything, <laughs> every single detail. Sitting on the bench, not playing. Bro, getting mm. shouted at. Losing mm. the ball. Losing games, mm. you need to love it. Mm. You will never survive if you don't love it. That's what I mean, you need to love the, the, the beautiful and the dark side of the game. How many times do you see kids nowadays, they're backing out of headers, they're backing out of tackles, they're like, oh, I don't want to get injured. But they don't realise, if if the guy's going 100% and they're going 50%, you're more than likely the one to get injured bro, every single time. Did your joints are like loose and then your joints twist and stuff like that. But if you're tense, going 100%, going through momentum, huh? it's just going to go like this. But if you're, this is going hard and this is going slow, this will punch this one. This one's going to hit. Do you know what I mean? And like, it's the same thing with head is all that, like, going battles and, and that. See, kids are like, like oh, oh. but there's one kid I remember. Oh, there's one game in the uh, semi pro game, like, he had like Beckham esque haircut, and then every every two minutes in the game, Patrick he was going, he was going like this with his hair, going like this. I'm thinking, what are you doing? And he goes, just fixing my hair. I want the pictures to look good, bro, bro. I swear to God, two minutes later, I just hit him in a tackle. I'm thinking, you're gay. I don't <laughs> care. Do you know what I mean? You're disgusting me. You shouldn't be playing football. But I just went through him. I took the yellow card. I didn't care, bro. And I'm like, you're gay, bro. You're <laughs> batty, man. Do you know what I mean? What the hell? Man's going. Man's going for the header. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking, what's going on? What was doing my head in, bro? And the thing is, he was playing centre mid. And not the, the one game I was in centre back. 
I'm thinking, I can't, I'll, I can't wait to get near him so I can just hit him. <laughs> he's just pissing me off the whole game. But I imagine the whole game, man's going, man's doing this with the eyebrows. And you're like, what are you doing? And he goes, I'm getting glass off my eyes. <laughs> Bro, I'm thinking, this guy. Ugh. Brother, ugh. That's crazy, bro. But then we have David Goggins. The guy that is just doing the, the, the disgusting, the ugly stuff. The guy that is just running on broken legs. The guys that is just, just going out from hospital bed just to do a run. And you might think that, okay, yeah, but obviously he doesn't love it. Bro, he loves the he loves the feeling of beating his ego. This is what yeah. he loves. He he truly loves to beat beat down his ego and say, look at me, bitch. Overcome <laughs> you again. Who's gonna carry the boats? <laughs> you don't know me, son. Yeah. You don't know me, son. So oh, even yeah. if even like you, you might think that this guy is crossing out his comfort zone, bro, he loves it. He loves yeah. it truly with his heart. Of course. But this is what I'm saying, like, you have to, you need to be careful who you surround yourself with and who you um, look up to. If you are looking up to Neymar, blah, 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 you can't be copying his behavior, going carnival with the sister, blah, blah, blah. Do you know what I mean? It's a bit of, it's a bit of a gay but a gazy one anyway. It? But it's, you should be choosing like James Miller, like the like the high performance podcast that he released or whatever. Like that is the best example that you need to follow. Bro, he loves well it. That, you can tell he, he loves, loves it. it. He loves the everything, bro. Man's breaking fitness records every cup he goes to, every season, beating the youngsters, the young dog and that. <laughs> I've been doing this uh, uh, 20 years. <laughs> you're like a young puppy. You don't even know you're a young, young dog, do you know what I mean? Uh, I'm going to show you up, do you know what I mean? And at the age of 37, he's still showing up. Bro. He's like, no one's taking my contract. I'm staying here. I know I'm on, on a one year contract, but I'm here to stay. Guess what? He's got an extra contract for next year again. And again, and again. And then Ashley Young was the same thing. So, you need to kind of be mindful of who you look up to and you need to be mindful of who you surround with, yourself with. Bro, the amount of time. Do you know who's a good example? Ravel Morrison. Sir Alice Reagan said, he is the best young talent I've ever seen. All the money that I face said, you're the young best talent I've ever seen. Bro, you know what he did? He still involved himself in gangs. Still involved himself in that um in that like gang life, his mates doing like um selling drugs blah 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 and that, and he's staying up at three four a.m. Do you know what I mean on the road life? Why? 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 What are you doing? You play for Man United. Do you know what I mean? Well, for me, you need to be careful who you surround yourself with, and that comes that. Also means if you need to move out of house, if you have a toxic family, that also means if you need to create space between your your your, your, your girlfriend and your, the do you know what I mean? Oh, I don't want to go to Spain because I'm going to be homesick. Oh, oh piss off! Do you know what I mean? I wish I had your contract. Like, some people don't understand the privileged position that they're in. And some people don't understand what the sacrifice that it takes in order to make it. Do you know what I mean? Bro, that's what I mean. Your priorities need to be in the correct place. Yeah. Pick your idols wisely as well. Don't pick the ones that like it. Like Neymar. Bro, he, he likes to play football, but he loves to do the parties, the carnivals. But you look at the player like Bellingham, you can see that this guy just loves it with with all of his heart. He's just giving his best every single game because he loves it. You cannot give your best every single game if you like it. Mm. It's like uh, mm. Ronaldo Messi. 
bro, this is they are all fantastic idols because they they love it. You can you can tell. Mm. It's like the foundations needs to be strong as as we said. One hundred percent. Um, if you love it, you wouldn't be that type of kid that be like, oh, I don't. When I wanna play striker, I wanna play wing. I remember the Casemiro story, bro. He was meant to be a striker or like a winger or something like that. He seen and he went like in this tr open trial, invitation trial. And he was at like, fifteen, sixteen, or whatever. He was like, okay, there's about six wingers trialing and like four strikers because there's only like two defensive mids trialing I'm going to play defensive mid today I'm going to be a defensive mid I don't care about getting on the ball whatever I'm going to be a ball winner and I'm going to great plays even though between 0 to 14 15 he's been a striker and a winger all his life do you know what I mean we like no nah. I don't care about my pleasure on getting on the ball, being fancy and scoring. I need that contract. Uh, my priorities are bigger, my purpose are bigger. And I don't care that I didn't play some defensive mid or earn it in my life. I'm going to have performance in my life. It's a must. And he did it. And he got that contract. Playing defensive mid first time in his life. That's what you need to do. None of this. Oh, I wanna, I wanna, I, I wanna. I don't care. Get on with it. Maybe a manager one game will play long balls. Get on with it. Adapt. Do you know what I mean? Improvise. The best players improvise. The world is not gonna accommodate towards you. You need to accommodate towards the world. End of. Because at the end of the day, everyone, every club that you go to, everyone's going to be like, who do you think you are? Who are you? So you need to prove yourself. And when you need to prove yourself, pleasure goes out the window. And purpose comes in. I know, I know, I know. I'm sorry for breaking the podcast. Just one announcement, okay? Check out our channels on Instagram, on TikTok, on Facebook, Play by Play Podcast. And there is one belief that uh, people are saying that uh, a poor kid has a bigger chance of becoming professional than the rich kids. And uh, I think it's because the rich kids are getting more thrown at them. Like they have options and they can... That's that's what I'm saying. They can actually become more successful than the poor poor kids because they get options and they can select what they love, what they like. But the thing is that the, there is a bigger probability that they choose the wrong thing that they love. You hear many many rich kids becoming a drug addict later in life, becoming a workaholics, becoming unhappy. Because they just love the grind, for example. Mm. And like many, many poor kids that make it, you can see that they just truly love it because they went through all the all the negativity, all the shitting on them, everything. Mm. So that's what I'm saying, because the poor kids using football as a getaway or to block noise and mm. so I mean. And they love it, do you know what I mean? Whereas the rich kids there, it's just a hobby, do you know what I mean? Mm. And like Doyen said, when you're in a first world country, you have too much accessibility to too many things. Bro, you can be unemployed and can still earn money. <laughs> do you know what I mean? In, in Africa, you can't buy a car on like monthly pay, do you know what I mean? In this country, you can buy a Range Rover, a Mercedes, do you know what I mean? For like three, two, three hundred pounds a month on lease or whatever. Or on finance, we can get it for 450. Like, and you can like, oh, I, can, I can pretend to look rich and pretend to be that rich life. Do you know what I mean? And again, it, it derails you from your purpose. Because you've got too much accessibility, whether that be the party, the women, wh whatever it is, right? 
And this is what I mean, like, your purpose has to be bigger than your um pleasure. And you should see, be seeking for long-term delayed gratification instead of instant gratification. That's all it is. Do you want it now for, like, the now pleasure to com- that will compromise your future? Or do you want the pain now that's going to do benefit for long-term pleasure? and long-term wants and needs, which is like getting your, fam- like getting your family out of the, the hood or whatever it may be, or like side of money, building schools, building hospitals, because his dad, when his dad died, he didn't have that hospital care, or building like, like water wells, or people that are religious, they build mosques or they build churches, do you know what I mean? Giving back to the community, their purpose, is way bigger than themselves. Yeah, but that's that's like my point is also that uh, every dream has a price. Like if you would go to Sadia Mane at the age of eighteen and you would give him hundred million and say, "Here is hundred million, but you cannot play football anymore," he would take it. But he would mm. he would hundred percent take it because I understand he's unselfish and he would like to help his village and everything. But that's like what what we are saying is. Do you love it? Would you decline 100 million just to be mm. able to play football all, your, all of your life? 100%. This is the level you need to love it. Mm. 100%. And that's what I was saying. If if you can't seem to love it, then what I would say is like the only way or the way you can make it, even though the chances are even lower, is make sure your, your prize is priceless. As much as you can, otherwise pointless. Otherwise, you're gonna be like a Marcus Rashford. His 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 prize was like what five million. As soon as it hit that five million, that we have man goes at, I'm gone, safe. Mm. Make up on a Wednesday. See you later. Hundred thousand fine. Don't care. I'm getting two hundred fifty thousand. That's only half of my wages. You can clear that in two days, three four days. Yeah, clear it. Yeah, you know yeah. yeah. Do you know what I mean? That's what it is, bro. Everything is just in past choices. Like you can you can see in your past choices what the person you are. If you when you get paid, do you save the money so you can travel and support your football career and or you just spend it on a Gucci bag? <laughs> or on on a or on a woman that doesn't even love you and you're like look at this my ten out of ten model. Uh oh, this is the I'm not shut up. I mean, well, it is what it is, isn't it? Yeah. Your life, your choices, people. Your life, your choices. Okay? At the end of the day, go do what you want. But we're just preaching how you can increase the probability of making it. Loving it is, is the main part of it. Mm. Purpose over pleasure. Any day of the week, every single day. I don't care. Oh, it's my 18th birthday. Oh, I am now legal. Oh, it's my 21st birthday. I can now do this. Oh, let's forget all that. Wow, that was an episode. If you want to see more, check out this one.